Hi everyone, and for this Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an image which captures motion. Uh, and what I mean by that is that this, this image that you're seeing right now was actually multiple photos. It was 3, 6, 9, 11, I believe, all grouped together to show the movement of this one windsurfer across the water. And so this video is going to show you how to do that. I'm using Adobe Photoshop Creative Suite for the extended edition. Some of the functions might that I'm going to show you might only be available and extended. I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do this with the built-in scripts and then how to do it manually. Manually is a lot more time consuming and less enjoyable. Uh, but the results can be different, sometimes better. So to start off with, here's how we do it with the scripts. I'm going to go to Scripts, Load Files into Stack, Browse. I'm already in the right parent folder, root folder, whatever it is. I'm going to go into my Originals folder, which I call Origs for shortness. 10, because this is image 10 that I'm working on. Select all of those with Control A. Open. OK. Now it's going to take just a minute here, and it's going to uh, open all of these into a stack, and we'll be back when it finishes. Okay, so everything's loaded into a stack. You can see over here in the layers, in the right side, these are all the images that were the original so images. So I'm going to hold down Shift. I clicked on the top, top layer right here. I'm going to hold down Shift and select all of the layers. You have to select all of the layers because what we're going to do now is run a process that affects only the layers you've selected. So you go into Edit, Auto Align Layers, Automatic. This is typically the best. Sometimes you, you, the more, these other ones are more for panoramas, but we're going to automatically align them based on content because we don't want to have a large panorama. We want to have the images stacked with the um, surfer moving through them. So we're going to click OK. This is going to take a few minutes, and when it's done, we'll be back. And we're back, and it actually only took about eight seconds to do. Um, I underestimated my computer grossly. So here you can see these are the different layers, and you can see there's a little bit of a jagged edge here where they align differently, and uh, you can see down here where there's slight color differences, like here the image was metered slightly differently by the camera. And so these are all the layers aligned based on content. To show you what I mean, I'm going to turn off the top layer, top layer come up here, and you can see as I turn it on and off that the surfer is in a slight, wind surfer is in a slightly different position. So now we need to make sure that the layers are all highlighted, all selected, and if I hadn't just done that demonstration they would all remain selected. Then we're going to go into auto blend layers, stack images, we want to make sure stack images is checked, Seamless Tones and Colors. Okay. And this will just take a few seconds. What it's doing is it's blending the selected layers based on content. And so what it's doing is it's looking for differences within each image. And it's dropping out the things that are, th that are the same, in this case the clouds, and keeping the things that are different. Probably some of the wave position, hopefully not too much and these two different windsurfers positions as they moved across the frame. So given a couple more seconds we're going to get a final product here and it should look like a couple of windsurfers, one in the foreground, one in the background, moving across the frame rather like long caterpillars. Yeah, and just like that. So now what you can see is each of the images has been blended together and what we've got is an image that looks very much like the original, probably because I did this the exact same way. So now you can see here what e the, the, the black and white areas, the white air areas on each layer are what was kept between the uh, layers, and so you can see the different things as I scroll through them, what was kept to create the final image. Now the next thing we need to do is layer is flatten the image because right now it's still a bunch of linked layers and that doesn't really give us a lot of latitude to do much with it. So we flatten this and the next thing that I'm going to do is crop this to get out some of the areas where there wasn't complete coverage, which is to be expected anytime you do something like this. 
and crop, and that's the final image. Now, to capture this, what I did was I set my, my DSLR, which is a, a Pentax K7, and, and most DSLRs have various modes similar to this. I set it in high speed capture, stood in one place, and just took 11 frames, holding down the uh, photo, the, the shutter release button, as I did for the entire time. And that worked out to being about two seconds worth of images. So what we're seeing here is two seconds in the life of a windsurfer. And capture these 11 images, and then I just blended them like, like we showed you. Now, let's say, for instance, that uh, we're going to go back here lit a lot. So we're going to keep the auto-align layers. That's where we want to be. We're going to get rid of the auto blend layers. Now, let's say you don't have the auto blend function on your version of, of uh, Photoshop. That's OK. There are workarounds for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, draw an elliptical marquee up here. Uh, I want to capture a little bit more of the sky. And then down here as well, I'm going to feather this. Uh, let's go with 7. Why not? It sounds like a good number. I could be wrong. I'm just guessing at this. I'm going to select the inverse and delete. Oh, yeah. I'm going to select the inverse and just this layer. And now hit delete. Now, what we can see is I have actually not cropped out quite enough. So I'm going to come back here, select the inverse again, delete, try this again. Why is this not deleting? Yeah. There it goes. I, I was just hitting the wrong button. Okay. Now come down here, we don't really have much more than this guy, so select the inverse. Uh, maybe, I don't know why it's not deleting these today. Oh, I know why. Second. I see what I did. So we're going to go back a couple steps. These things happen in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. You know, you may make a mistake, screw up, things like that. We're going to go back a little bit further. Here we go. This is where we need to be. Before this, before we deselected, before we deleted that other section. We're going to go back a few steps. We're going to select that. Now we're going to hold down Shift to add another area. What I had done was forgot, I forgot to select these guys down here. Now I'm going to select the inverse. Now I'm going to hit delete. And now you can see basically what the script does. Instead of doing all of this manually by, by hand, very time consuming uh, pro prospect to do this one at a time, is it automatically does all of this. Now another thing that this can't do is without great difficulty, there's going to be some cutoff up here. The way to get around that, we're going to zoom way in, as you just saw. We're going to select the brush. We're going to make it a lot smaller. That's a good size. We're going to make the opacity, let's go with 28. And then you would have to manually erase in however much you feel like you want to keep. And you can see getting rid of, now 28 is pretty gentle. Uh, you could select something like 50% for this, uh, which would take about three passes to erase completely and be in pretty good shape. There we go. And if you, if you set it at about 40%, you could blend the sky fairly quickly as well. So as you can see, what I just did manually in the span of about four minutes for one small segment of this image, Photoshop did in seconds for all the segments of all of the images. Now, granted, there are a few, a few glitches you can see up here, for instance. There's a few blending glitches. 
and some of the colors did not uh, come through exactly perfectly. But by and large, Photoshop did a pretty good job on this. So that's how you take multiple images that you photograph in sequence with your camera and open them in a stack, automatically align them, automatically blend them, flatten the images, and come up with this finished product. There's one downside to this though, which I just noticed. If you have any dirt on your sensor, it's going to appear every single time. There we go. Now the picture's perfect.